All right, everyone. So in this video here, I'm going to be, this is more like a take two of showing my computer slash play area when it comes to playing games and stuff. And part of the reason I'm doing this is, well, for one, uh, to see the different uh, video quality. And two, one of the things, and I can't really show you because I'm actually using it, is a brand new 4K camera. So yes, I'm using a brand new 4K camera. I have a little uh, tripod remote thing that I'm holding. And yeah, so the microphone is straight from the camera. There's no external microphone right now. That way I can test out how well the audio quality is. So yeah, um, so I can like paint around and basically start showing you everything I have here. So let's go over to the computer. And there were some tweaks I did since the last video and I'll get to those. Nothing too extreme, but you know, here's my computer setup area. Here's my E-Win gaming chair. Uh, so far this chair has been holding up pretty well. I think I've had this for like two years now or just over two years I think. And so far it's been it's been solid. And this is my computer area. So here's my computer tower right there, my Xbox controller, some uh, computer junk. And uh, down there is my MetaQuest 2 in its case. And here is the main computer area. So obviously up here I use a Elgato ring light with a Elgato face cam. And the nice thing about this setup here is in the future if I decide to change out this uh, webcam to uh, say like a more proper camera, I can actually do that. And of course here is my keyboard and mice monitor some uh, controls for my uh, stream deck and I put a little charging state charging stand right there for my phone but yeah all in all uh, pretty slick based on the space I'm working with now what I do also is when I stream I actually use a little uh, tablet I use a Windows tablet which is actually a, a Surface RT2. So it's one of those older ARM-based uh, tablets, Windows-based tablets. And I use a software called uh, Splashtop so that I can stream it to it. And I have a little special HDMI plug that basically makes it think there is a second display when there's really not. So I would basically load up the software, connect it to it wirelessly, change the display and then I have a temporary uh, dual display and what I primarily use it for is for the chats so I can play a game on here in full screen have the chat to the side and I can just read the chats as I'm streaming that's why I use it I was gonna try to do like a more permanent solution but I figure doing it this way is more like a compromise and because I don't always need two displays all the time, this is kind of a, a nice way. So I would just have it sitting right there when I'm using it. And uh, yeah. So over here, you know, not much has changed. Oh, actually, before I go there, uh, there were a couple of changes, though. So I have this device back here. So I can zoom in slowly apparently and um, I have a little uh, Dell docking station and the point of that is sometimes I work at home I also have a work laptop that I primarily leave at work sometimes if I bring it home I have a cable back here that I can literally grab and it's just one cable and it will charge the laptop and basically have all of the uh, connections. So with one cable, it can uh, display my, the image on my uh, display here, use the keyboard and mice and all that. 
and part of it is because I have a little USB switch. So I have this uh, button under here. So if I need to use it, I can just uh, press that button underneath it. It'll switch over to the other ports or to the other USB port for that laptop. And I can literally just use the same keyboard and mice. And I did add a SD card uh, reader. This is one of these uh, special kinds that's designed for this uh, memory card I use for this camera. Apparently this, this style SD card has more pins on it, mainly because for faster speeds, faster rewrite speeds. So because the camera I'm using is able to record high frame rate stuff, it needs the bandwidth. So that's, that's why. But if we go over here, I was uh, watching Jay's Two Cents uh, before uh, I decided to record this, but not much has changed really. You know, I'm still using the same uh, Sony Bravia 55 inch 4K TV from like 2015. It works fine. It's an Android TV. I don't use the Android TV part of it. I just use it as a display. It's not connected to the network or anything, which is good because Sony does not support it anymore with software and security updates. So it's actually more dangerous to use it. So I just use it as a display. I do use my Xbox Series X as my smart device. So, yeah. And of course over here, uh, another basket full of uh, gaming stuff in there. Here is my Steam Deck sitting right there. And of course over here, I don't have my uh, Nintendo Switch in the dock right now, but there's the docking station. And if you notice, I have two Atari VCS consoles. By the way, that thing right there, if anyone's wondering, that's one of those, um, uh, how you call it, UMA phone systems. Still need a home phone from, from my parents' house for some reason. That's why we have it. Basically, buy, buy the device and you get free phone service. You just pay the taxes on it each month and that's it. Which is like five bucks or so. But uh nice thing about it, though, is that, you know, if you're someone that moves a lot, you can literally just take that with you, connect it to the network, and you're good to go. In that way, that's actually kind of cool. I'm getting off track with that. If you notice, I have two Atari VCS consoles. Why do I have two of them? Well, the top one, which is the uh, Black Walnut version, that is the regular Atari OS game console. So basically out of the box, playing uh, Atari VCS native games on it. The one underneath it, that one I turned it into a Windows 10 computer. Because these are just AMD-based machines. So they're just small form factor AMD-based PCs. The difference is one runs Atari OS, the other one runs Windows 10. And yes, apparently, this is actually uh, capable of upgrading to Windows 11 without any modifications or anything. Apparently... Um, I can upgrade to Windows 11 if I wanted to. So in, in terms of future proofing, that's actually nice. But the reason why I have two is that the Windows 1, the Windows 10 version, I use it for emulation. So I will have like RetroArch on it. I will have a bunch of ROMs on it. I use a Xbox Series controller sitting right there. And behind it, I do have that Xbox wireless receiver for the controller. And it works fine. In fact, if I grab my controller and change it to what I call the Atari VCS PC or VCS PC, I have this little keyboard here. And if I switch it on, 
press like a key on the keyboard to wake it up there it is and this is Windows 10 running on the VCS actually in fact there's a Windows update so might as well get this thing updated so do that check for updates and as you can see it does say here this PC can run Windows 11 so according to Microsoft the Atari VCS does meet minimum requirements to run Windows 11 I'm not gonna upgrade it right away mainly because I'd rather keep it at Windows 10 because I'm just using it for playing emulations on it so I don't need Windows 11 if I need to upgrade it later for whatever reason I'm gonna go ahead and do it but for right now it's not necessary my desktop PC runs on Windows 11 so I'm not I'm not hating on 11 and I do have a Surface Go 3 that runs Windows 11 it's just I don't want the Atari running Windows 11 right now but yeah it's obviously upgrading uh, just to let you know the spe the uh, I did upgrade both of them so they both basically got the same upgrade treatment upgrade them both to 16 gigs of RAM I added additional storage so it has 512 gigs of additional storage on them so in terms of the specs they're basically the same and and yeah that's pretty much it for the most part I do have this all-in-one printer so you know prints scans copies faxes uh, is one of these Epson eco tanks actually nice nice system but um yeah and of course that little black thing next to the printer that's just a charging cradle for my Logitech Harmony remote rest in peace because Logitech doesn't manufacture new versions of these kinds of controllers anymore which is pretty sad honestly but it is what it is but at least Logitech is still nice enough to support the software end of things so they're still keeping the servers alive for for that reason but I won't be surprised in the future if someone comes out with like a third party version that you can link all this stuff together so that even if Logitech does officially kill the servers for it there'll still be a way to continue using them because those are nice controllers I have to say but then again we do live in a world now that a lot of these kinds of devices kinda all links up together so like for example if my TV was off and I wanted to play the switch I can literally just like press the home button and as long as the switch is in the dock of course it will then automatically turn on the TV and turn on anything else that it would need and then I just start playing same thing on the Xbox and it's pretty much the same thing on the PlayStation side of things but yeah anyway that's pretty much it that was just a little tour of my little setup here and that's pretty much it like always have a good one leave those comments down below like this video share this video subscribe if you're not a subscriber and like always have a good one and if you do like the video quality of this just let me know in the comments and if by the way um if you're wondering what kind of camera i got it's one of these uh sony uh zv dash ones So yeah, I'll just uh, paint it back and forth before I end the video just so you can see the quality of it. But yeah, anyway, have a good one.